Welcome to The View from the Summit, conversations with the world's top trainers, handlers, and athletes in the equestrian and canine sports. Brought to you by Summit Animal Health. Welcome everyone to View from the Summit. My name is Steve Searcy and I'm a co-host here along with Robin Benson, who is absolutely the epitome of the cowgirl. She spent all day yesterday running calves. And if you don't know what that is, um, well, I had to ask her, Robin, what's running calves? Well, we were working calves. We tried actually not to run them, but um, sometimes they like to because they feel frisky. We just vaccinate and castrate steer calves, and it's kind of the fall work that you do. Um, sometimes we castrate in the spring, but they got too big, and there was lots of stuff. So we did it this fall, and then uh, we turned them back out. So it's fun. It was beautiful weather. We had a great crew, so it's always a good day. And then we eight it's like part of it right you <laughs> you work cattle and then you eat it's super fun so anyway thanks it's great to be here always and I'm really excited that we get to visit with Sherry Servi today she's a good friend and amazing not just cowgirls speak of the epitome of cowgirls but influence and positive energy in the industry so Sherry thank you for being here and if, if, if you're listening or watching today and you don't know who Sherry Servi is, we're going to let you know how to connect with her, but surely you've heard her name. And if you haven't, Sherry, tell us who you are and you generally travel through the year. So where you're coming to us from and we'll get started. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for having me today. Uh, right now I am in Wisconsin. Uh, Corey and I, my husband has been spending the summers up here in Wisconsin running yearlings uh, and kind of going to some rodeos up here in the Great Lakes circuit. And so we actually are getting ready. We leave Saturday to head back to Texas uh, for the winter for about three months and then go to Arizona, which is home. And, you know, I'm a professional bar racer and kind of do things, you know, wherever the wind blows me that day. But I haven't really been rodeo in the last couple of years full time, just you know, doing some stuff with the family businesses and working on youth races and uh, riding colts. So it's, you know, it's been fun. The dream life of a cowgirl, right? Like everybody <laughs> listening, I love your story because you had parents who rodeoed successfully, but you had the chance, you know, you had the chance to rodeo, but you had to make it happen, right? Like you had an opportunity, rodeo college is like, do it or not do it and the grit that you have shown from an early age and it's never stopped right so i mean i'm we might as well get to everyone who knows you knows you as a hall of fame cowgirl record breaking money earning barrel racer and we might as well start there because it's just amazing and then i'd love to share we'd love to visit a little more about your heart for helping the youth because this, and you have a youth race coming up soon in Verndale, Minnesota, but just to see with those kids is just how you light them up and inspire them and run a first class race is incredible. But let's talk about your cowgirl. I mean, I'm sure you've, you know, talked about it forever, but it's still remarkable. And to me, what stands out is not only your grit, but your grace, like you are always inspiring people. You deal with hardships with grace. And like Steve said, the epitome of cowgirl spirit. So how did you get started running barrels so competitively? You also rope, um, you know, you ranch. And so how did it start? So you um, are right. My parents rodeoed. I grew up riding a horse and I don't ever remember not riding. Uh, my mom made the NFR three times. My dad was at the very first NFR in Dallas, Texas as a calf roper. So, you know, it was in me. It's something, though, that I have loved from when I was a little girl being a bar racer. I did do all the other events. I roped. I rode cutting horses, uh, pull bended, go tied. And, um, but bar racing was my passion. And I did kind of struggle at a younger age, just, you know, getting the right horses and, you know, had some horses get hurt and just part of life is being a bar racer. And, you know, and so it's been a very, uh, very good career. I never thought that I'd be at this point when I started out, you know, because I literally just wanted to try and make the finals one time. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's been a great career and I don't feel like I'm done yet. I, I still enjoy competing, uh, even though I don't go as much. 
but I love riding colts and, you know, getting them started. And um, kind of my dad was in the breeding business. So I got to compete on horses that um, we bred and raised. And so now I'm getting to compete on horses that are out of mares that, you know, I got to go to the finals on and, and compete on. So that's really fun. And Corey and I actually own uh, a couple different studs. So we're, you know, we're full into the breeding business, which is um, exciting and sometimes, <laughs> you know, frustrating, but um yeah, you know, I mean, and then, like I said, I have the youth races that we started about 13 years ago in California, and now we have four across the United States, and we are getting ready to go to Verndale, Minnesota, but we enjoy going there, and this year, for the first time, we went to Columbiana, Ohio, which was awesome. That was a lot of fun, and then we also have one in Tucson, Arizona, and then Ceres, California, so, you know, it is, it's about giving back to the industry that has been amazing to to me I think the kids are our future and you know I tell people is even though these kids may not be professional bar racers when they grow up it's an event that they can go with their family uh, you know compete have a good experience and you know uh, hopefully it, it leaves a lasting impression with them it's an opportunity for them to meet kids that they may not ever have been able to meet uh, and have you know established lifelong friendships and we give scholarships away. My sponsors have, you know, stepped up and are a big, big part of making the the races happen. And I have a great team that I could not do with do it without them. And so, you know, it, that's that's fun and um, getting to, like I said, having a maybe a positive impact in a kid's life. I don't think, you know, I may not ever know what impact it has, but if it it helps them down the road that's that's what it's about for me Sherry, so, well what anytime you get horses and kids together there's two things that happen one uh it really pulls at your heartstrings and and it it's just amazing and two funny things can happen so could you share the the most heartwarming story that you can remember that that really stands out um, uh, Steve, I could be here all day telling you the heart. There's a heartwarming, several heartwarming stories at every race. Um, you know, I think what what I love about uh, you know each race that what it brings. There's a couple different things that we're learning that or seeing more and more parents that did not come from a Western background, but their daughters fell in love with the horse or saw you know went to an event or you know their friends road and their little girl comes home and says I want to be a barrel racer and these parents are just you know full in not really knowing what they're getting into but that's what's cool about the western industry is there's uh, so many people there to help and you know direct those parents in the right direction and help those kids and then um there are also we're finding like seeing um you know certain individuals that are they're kind of like trainers or you know they they have um, a facility for city kids that they can't keep horses or can't own horses and their parents will drop them off and, you know, they ride after school and they get to learn and do chores. And um, that's, that's really cool because, it, you know, these people, they also are giving uh, sacrifice, you know, time for these kids and making a lasting impression. And um I know I'm not answering your your question, but a specific story because it, it's really hard to choose. Um, I guess it, uh, just off the top of my head, there was one little girl that her grandma came and told me that you know, and they um, didn't have a a lot of money to have to to go and travel a lot, but she said that her granddaughter wanted to come to one of my races for Christmas. And so they, you know, put the money away and, and saved money. And that was her gift for Christmas. And to think that the kid, that's what they asked for for Christmas is to come spend the weekend at one of our races. That is, you know, very heartwarming. And um, it's just, it's a really cool, cool feeling. I can understand that. And a funny story. Oh, goodness. We have. <laughs> There again, you're putting me on the spot. I, I there's, well, just, you know, just, I, I, I love watching kids like when, you know, 
you go watch them after the race is over and, and interact with each other and, and play in. And, um, you know, we went uh, in California because the weather's amazing in May when we have that race and you go out and those kids are literally sleeping on cots you know, outside their trailer and, you know, they have little campfires and, and just watching them interact with each other. And, you know, they're not on their phone. They're, they are actually face-to-face -face talking and establishing a relationship. I think that's really cool. Cause that's why I tell those kids, you know, at the beginning of the race that the, I, their goal should be that weekend is to meet three new friends and not on Facebook or Snapchat or doing anything like, you know, actually talk and, and learn something about um, each other. And so, you know, I think that in today's world, we're losing that. So, so I have to share two stories. I have specific stories from last year's Verndale race where I was down there with you. And I still remember them clear as day. This year's Verndale race, we have a wedding. My niece is getting married. So I'm super bummed. My daughter's not gonna be able to run. But last year, there was a girl you and I were walking through the doors out of the arena and there was a girl that came up to you and she was probably 10 or 11. And, um, we were, you and I were talking and she said, I'm, excuse me. She was super polite. I just have, and she was like timid to talk to you and she had to come up to you and she was in tears. And then we were all in tears. She said, I have tried so hard to get my horse down the alley. And I was so afraid because you have really strict rules with your races that I respect a lot. We can talk about those in a minute, but if they can't get down the alley, they get disqualified. And she was so worried about her horse coming down the alley. And she said, I got down the alley and I made a good run. And thank you so much for having this race. And you gave her a big hug. And we were all crying. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, this is what it's about. And the kids get to see you and give you hugs and get encouraged by you and really having that, I mean, you put yourself out there like emotionally for these kids. If you come to one of Sherry's races, you get to know like Sherry's really intense as a competitor and it's kind of reserved because you have to, you know, you're so focused, but when you're at her race, you guys, if you're listening or watching, it's unbelievable how her heart is there for these kids. And the second story is there was, I think she was nine, maybe 10, but I think she was nine and she won a saddle in the youth, in the average. And she had been in a life threatening accident the year before and couldn't even walk, was in the hospital and didn't know if she'd get to ride again. And this little girl came out to this race and want to saddle you all. And we were, I mean, these are the stories that you hear and Sherry, you have been amazing at facilitating all of these, bringing them out and recognizing these kids at all levels it's a 5D barrel race. And so if you're not familiar with barrel racing, there's five divisions and there's half second time splits. So a lot of people can win. A lot of kids at different levels can experience, you know, success at different levels and exposure. It's just incredible to watch. And the other piece I want to share, and I know I'm, we're interviewing Sherry, but to share this, the, can you share some of the, the really specific guidelines of your races, like the dress code and the etiquette and the manners and you guys when you talk about continuing the cowgirl life and the the cowgirl way of life sherry's races are set up not only to give back money and prizes and all this but to give a snapshot of you know carrying yourself dressing all like a, a the cowgirl way of life right tell us a little bit about that because i think it's something that's getting lost a little bit like you said yeah, um, you know, so we we try to everybody. You have to have rules, and unfortunately, you know, you, you have to enforce them. We're all, you know, I think that if you learn to follow rules when you're younger, um, it just sets you up for life in kind of a positive way. And you know, we have the rules, and there have been kids that had to get disqualified because their parents maybe, you know, didn't specifically read rules or, you know, kind of take it for granted. Somebody else is going to take it, take care of it for you. And honestly, in my mind, I'm like, man, this is just a life lesson. And, you know, we don't want to disqualify anybody by no means, but you have to have rules. And so, you know, um, in dress code or, you know, either a hat or handle. And I think, you know, that's really a Another thing that is important, you know, in your future is, is looking professional, no matter what you're going to do. And, um, it, you know, it just is, uh, 
we we do have kind of, you know a time limit that you know if you're trying to get in it, your horse in and you know i mean they're barrel horses and so they can be high strung and you know we, we but it's it's about safety too and we want to keep you know everybody else safe in the the warm up pens and um you know it just we kind of tried to establish a you know a, a precedence of of how it want, we want to run and also like we make you be there to get your awards if you're if you, something happens and you can't be there then you know we give the award to the next place down but my thing is that i don't want it to just be another event that you go to and you know you're going to win you know some prizes i want this to be uh, you know something special and that you remember for the rest of your life and so that's why we don't have very many um and uh, this is a joke everybody says why don't you come to texas because you know there's lots of um kids down there because texas i feel like you know you know the kind of south have so many opportunities for kids and youth races and and events then and it wouldn't be something special so anyways we love texas but uh you know, I think, you know, there's, a, there's enough down there for kids right now. And, um, but yeah, you, you just, I think you, you have to establish, you know, um, how you want something run and, and we try to be as professional as we can. And, um, you know, like I said, make it a, a great experience for the kids and we limit it to 400 entries uh, total because we don't want it to be a marathon. We don't want the parents dreading and having to you know get their kids ready at one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning to to run we want it you know where they can you know it gets done at a decent time you want to go to dinner with your family or you know cook out if kids have time to to play and interact with each other and so um you know that's that's just what we do <laughs> sherry from from doing this um how has it changed you um you know, I, I, that's a good question. I'm gonna, <laughs> I think it's, um, I don't know, you look at life differently when you look at, you know, how kids, uh, you know, through the eyes of a child uh, and the, the little things that you may take for granted that, you know, I did when I was younger and, you know, the excitement and somebody comes out and um, they're, uh, you know, maybe, or a second and a half, two seconds off, and you, you, but they're excited because they accomplished something, you know, with their horse, and, and their friends are there to, to um, congratulate them. We, in Arizona, there was a little girl that had an accident with her horse right before she ran, and um, so we let her, you know, obviously switch horses, and it, it was, a, you know, something that I'm sure this little girl's not going to, um, ever forget you know her horse got hurt and and she couldn't run him and um so we put her at the because it was right before she she ran so we put her at the end of the draw and when she ran like I still get chills thinking about it like you can't believe that the group of her friends that came to the fence to watch her to I mean she had to jump on basically a, a team roping horse you know something that just made the pattern and the support I mean, we're talking like an 11, 12 year old and um, the support that she had. And when she came out, there was probably about 15 of her friends came around and they just all hugged her and, and were crying. And like, I, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. And, you know, I think you, you got to step back and look at, remember what is important. Um, you know, everybody wants to win, um, but it's about, you know, how you handle the trials that come in your life. Uh, how you handle losing, how you handle winning. And I think that you can take that into your life, uh, you know, in the future and just everyday life. And so, you know, I mean, it, it, it takes me back and it's humbling some of the stories you hear, what kids are going through in their personal life. And you would never know because they're happy and they're just, you know, are enjoying being with their horses. Um, what horses can do for a person's soul uh, is amazing and um you know like it's just it's humbling every race my I, I joke about that when I start the race I said you know I'm not going to cry this race and I do every time because it's somebody's story you know we give a horse with most heart um and just but that's life and the, you know 
uh, like Robin said, the, you get to see a side of me that probably not everybody sees, but kids bring it, kids and horses are very close to my heart. Yep. And you break that promise every year. <laughs> I do. <laughs> and she's really good at getting the entire place crying with her. So she's not alone. Like she's, <laughs> she brings the cowgirl spirit out when she's in the arena and she, she's emotionally getting to everybody's heart. I mean, last year during the awards, everybody was crying. It was on. And, you know, I just love the fact that you are willing to invest in these kids and invest in their future, you know how much horses have impacted your life. And instead of just being a Hall of Fame cowgirl, the most winning barrel racer, the most successful at business, you are giving back in a way to these kids that, you know, it's it's really, it's really admirable. I, I know we live in Northern Minnesota and everybody around here, we're only an hour and a half from Verndale, but before I even went to the race, years before, people were talking about it. it's a big deal for them to go. They don't forget it. It's a, you know, like you say, it makes an impact. And what got you started wanting to sort of dig in and give back to the youth, you know, making that shift in the hard drive focus on your own career? Because that takes a lot of time and energy, right? I mean, you're juggling both now, but to shift into pouring a lot into that direction kind of what was the spark for that you know so I um had gone to Martha Josie's bra race when I was younger probably when I was about 11 12 I think I went three or four years my parents took me there and you know that was a big deal because you got to go um I went from Arizona and you know to Texas and got to see kids from all over the United States and I still you know have those some friends that I met at Martha's race today and so I just, it was just a great experience. I never did great at it, but I always had fun and it just, it was a really cool event. So, and you know, you gotta think when we started this about 12, 13 years ago, there was not as much for, for the youth, especially on the West coast. And so I have a really good friend, Shane Parsons, who owns an arena there in series. And I told him, I said, I want to put on a youth race on the West coast. And he was like, let's do it. And the next year we did, I called my sponsors. Every one of them stepped up and said, yes, I want to be involved. Uh, we decided to give, you know, saddles to each division. And that's just kind of how we started it. And it was, it started out being, we did an open race and then we did the youth after. Well, as the youth race grew, then the kids, you know, they were running late into the night and stuff. And I said, um, no, let's, I don't want this to be about the open riders. I want it to be about the kids. And so we, you know, shifted and made it kind of, you know, more of an uh, event for the actual kids. And so I, you know, I just, that's kind of how it started. And then we, uh, probably about six years ago, then added the race in Arizona. And I, you know, I had to bring one to my home state. And so it, it is, it just, I, I was trying to bring something to the West for kids and then it's grown. And now, you know, obviously we've, we have four and I, it just is, it's about the experience and I wanted to give back. Um, and that was my way. I, you know, I, at the time, that's what I, I thought I could, you know, try to help kids. It's not a clinic and, you know, I'm not to where I, I really want to do clinics in my life. And, um, but it's, you know, it's just something for, for kids and their family to come to. And, and like I said, I, I can't stress how much like that's so important that it, we, we have a, a good experience for the families and you know some kids are coming with friends um you know friends parents um uh, whoever it is you know that's it's important and um talking about that the little girl last year that won the saddle so two years ago a week before the youth race is when she got in the car accident and um the doctors told her she would never ride horses again so her parents sold all her horses. She, she spent, you know, I think over a month in the hospital, her back was broke and she was eight at the time. And so, uh, you know, we did kind of a little deal for her at the youth race and her, you know, a care package and stuff because she was entered in that race. So then moving forward into, you know, last year she gets, to, she shows up and now she's nine. And my race was actually one of the first competitions that got her back. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, I, I can start crying and thinking about her because uh, the, 
you know, what that little girl went through at such a young age, you know, some people will never experience the trials that she has, but I, you know, I told her what an inspiration she is to everybody, you know, little or, or big because, you know, she was there and she never gave up hope. And, and, you know, her parents went and got her a, another horse because lo and behold here, you know, she, she was being able to ride. And I think the power of, of the will and, and the horses and, you know, God is, you know, why she was, was able to compete there. And um, that's, that's pretty humbling, uh, you know, to, to see that little girl. And um, she was, that was a special moment. So it's it's first come first serve, is that right? So limited to four hundred, and it's that first four hundred that that send yep. in their application, and that's yep. And that's we way. have a waiting list. You know, stuff comes up, and the kids have to turn out. Um, you know, whatever. There's a waiting list, but yes, the basically the first four hundred. Arizona last year filled in four hours. Um. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Verndale this year it filled four or five or probably, I think it was about five or six hours it filled <laughs> and so do you plan on adding more of these sherry with the impact that they're having uh I don't know like I said this year was the first year that we went to Ohio so much fun you know great facility and got to meet you know a whole new set of of kids and like I said I don't there's a couple things I don't want to have too many um where you know, it loses its um, well, impact or, you know, the people wanting to come. Um, and two, my crew uh, that volunteer to come and, you know, sacrifice the time to come and help me. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to have too many for them because I, I would not be able to do it without my crew. I have, you know, my friends um, sacrifice their time and, and, you know, their lives to come and spend the week with us. And, you know, it's the youth races is my passion. And what's so humbling for me is that, you know, my friends have made it their passion and, you know, don't ever question, you know, want to do it or, you know, be there to help. So, uh, yeah, you know, so you're, I don't know. Okay. You're managing resources by limiting I it. I understand. <laughs> now, here's here's a question that I have. Do you have a scholarship fund for for kids? And if you do, then how could people listening to this podcast help with that or make a contribution so that a young person might get there? Right. Yeah, absolutely. We do. We give, you know, scholarships at each race and uh, those kids apply. They, they have to be enrolled in a school before we write the check. Um, and we write the check with their name and the school because I just don't want it to go to, you know, funding uh, the barrel racing, which as much as I'd love to help somebody go down the road, I want them to go to an education. So um, we have a Facebook, the Sherry Survey Youth Championships Facebook, and you can message us there and, um, you know, we can we can get the information of where, you know, you can send them money. And uh, one story that I will never forget about giving a scholarship is we had a, a girl that, uh, you know, applied for uh, a scholarship. She was already enrolled in college and I think uh, had been going for a couple semesters. And I called her and uh, I said, you know, I'm going to give you, I think it was $2,500 scholarship. Uh, and there was silence on the phone and I thought I lost her for a second. She said, I have one more semester left and didn't know how I was going to pay for it. And this is, you know, obviously going to help her. And that I called all my friends that helped me with the youth race. I said, this is why we do this. Because this kid, you know, she may not ever be a barrel racer down the road, but like this is going to help her get, you know, through school and, and really it legit made an impact in her life. So, um, yeah, we, we love for people, you know, we have a lot of people that just, they want to donate straight to the scholarship fund. And, and, um, you know, we love that. That's terrific. That's amazing. Yeah, that's really fabulous. So on that note, so they can go to the Facebook page and donate. What are the other ways that people can contact you for your, you know, to help out with the scholarships, with the youth, with the barrel races, um, you know, if they have questions? Is so basically, you know, now it's all about Facebook. So if you Facebook message us, we get, we'll get back to you. And there's an email. I think it's 
um, scyc at outlook.com is uh, our email. But uh, basically, I just tell everybody, you know, contact us on Facebook and, and we can get our, and, you know, if you're in those areas uh, close to, to where we have the youth raise, we love volunteers to come help <laughs> um, anytime. And, you know, love to have you. We have vendors, um, you know, my sponsors set up, um, you know, booths and um, have their products and people can learn about you know, the, the companies that are helping us make this happen. And, uh, you know, so that's, yeah, just follow us on Facebook. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Summit has started helping you with with uh, stuff to give to the kids and all that. Kind yeah, absolutely. Of they, they've they been huge. This last, the Ohio race, one of the cool things that Summit did was, so we have uh, about 60 kids that get awards. And we took all those um, 60 kids and put them in a, a random draw. And we drew two names, you know, in the one in the junior, one in the senior. And each one of those kids gets a summit for their horse for a year. And, you know, I mean, that that's a huge, that's a really big sponsorship. And, uh, you know, so it'll be fun to follow those kids along and, you know, watch, see how that uh, helps their horses and um but that you know they also gave some it also gave you know set up for the uh we give goodie bags every kid gets a bag with like a cap and you know just little trinkets and and stuff from our our sponsors so um yeah we we really appreciate what summits stepped up and started doing they also um you know give us some money that for the scholarship too yeah that's that's terrific and i know everybody loves watching you and and watching what you do in that area we really appreciate you being with us today um robin what do you have to say i think that's it man i'm excited to getting to see you in verndale even for the beginning of it <laughs> and we'll jump down there for a minute um any other ways if people want to follow you and your professional career where do they find you on social media? I think you have a, a Facebook and an Instagram page, right? Um, what are yep. the ways they can follow you? So um, follow on Sherry Survey, you know, fan page on Facebook. And then I have a Sherry Survey fan page on Instagram. And, you know, we try to keep it where, you know, you can see bar racing in my everyday life of, you know, Wisconsin, uh, my small animal uh, <laughs> uh sanctuary and um you know we get to see the studs that we have and so uh yeah i mean they can they can follow along and and get to see all the stuff that we get to do every day awesome so if you're listening or watching don't forget go follow sherry on all her channels you'll see amazing things there is a sense of humor side there that you're gonna want to watch because it's pretty comical to see some of the things that happen around her place it's amazing with all her little critters um it's really fun and if you're watching or listening youtube spotify make sure you follow this podcast subscribe because every week we come back with a new episode so thank you all so much for jumping in here we really appreciate your time and sherry as always it's wonderful to get to visit and hang out with you so thanks so much Sherry well, thank Robin, you. thank you very much, and we'll see you next week on A View from the Summit. Thanks for joining us for A View from the Summit. This program is made possible by Summit Animal Health. Check them out online at summitanimals.com. Thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you next week for another View from the Summit.